Unit 4, Lesson 1, Estimating the Area Under a Curve, Rectangular Approximation Method, or RAM. And the main idea is that the area of the region between the graph of a rate of change function and the x-axis gives the accumulation of change. Often we're asked to approximate this area using geometry. Today we will learn how to use rectangles of varying heights to approximate our area. So it's important to realize that today we're just approximating the area. And since we're using rectangles for our rectangular approximation method, we're going to be focusing in on the formula that the area of a rectangle is base times height. There are three different RAMs that you might be asked to calculate. An LRAM, an MRAM, or an RRAM, where L, M, and R are standing for left, middle, and right rectangular approximation methods. And if you look at the diagrams here, we've got this curved function, whatever this f of x is, and we've got these different rectangles drawn underneath. Now, all three of these illustrations are trying to approximate the area underneath this function between A and B. On the first one, the left rectangular approximation method uses the left endpoints of each of the subintervals to determine the height. So if we look at our interval from A to B here, in this example, we're splitting it into one, two, three, four, five rectangles. So by dividing the distance between A and B by five, we get these five equal subintervals. And each of these we would refer to as a delta X, a small change in X. And that's going to be equal to the base of each of these rectangles. And on each of these subintervals, I'm using the left side of the subinterval to trace up to the function and use that y value to determine the height of the rectangle. Then on this next subinterval, the left side is where the height of the rectangle is being drawn. And on the next subinterval, it's the y value from the left side that's determining the height and so on. Each subinterval the left side, the y value on the left side, is what's determining the top or the height of our rectangles. For the next one, the MRAM, the MRAM uses the midpoint of each subinterval to determine the height. So we're still looking at this same interval from A to B. And I can still count that I'm making one, two, three, four, five rectangles. And each of these bases along the way is going to be represented as delta x, the change in x to represent the base. It's divided evenly. But now, on my first subinterval, it's not the left side, but it's the y value from the middle that made the height of that rectangle. And then on my next subinterval, it's this y value from the middle of the interval or the midpoint that traced over or traced up to make the height. Same thing on the next one from the middle. That's where I get the height from the middle. So the MRAM uses the midpoint of each subinterval to determine what y value would be the height of our functions. Our rectangles, I mean. And then the RAM, you guessed it, uses the right endpoint of each subinterval to determine the height. So we're looking at our same interval A to B. We're still dividing it into five equal rectangles. So the delta X or the base of each rectangle is the same. But now on this first subinterval, I'm using the right side of that to use the y value to make the height of the rectangle. So now you can see that these rectangles are actually a little too big. This one represents an overestimate of the area. Whereas if we look back 
to the first one that we did, our LRAM, since we were using the left side, these are underestimates. Now, LRAM isn't always an underestimate. The only reason why that's happening this time is because we have an increasing function. So I don't want you to memorize that it's LRAM that's an under. I want you to see that the rectangles that I'm drawing are underneath the curve and sort of missing some of the area under the curve. Whereas the rectangles I'm drawing here are going over the curve. So since it's increasing, the right side of the interval is bigger, and that's why these heights of the rectangle are going up and over the top of the curve. The midpoint sort of looks like the best approximation this time because it's a little above, little, uh, little under, but that all is going to depend on different factors. So it's not always that the midpoint is, um, is the best. So when we're looking at the area of each rectangle, like we said before, Area formula for a rectangle is base times height. So let's sort of just break this down a little bit. The base of our rectangles are going to be the small changes or the small intervals in X. And the way that we got that is we took the whole interval from A to B, and if we subtract B minus A, we get the length of the whole interval, and then we're gonna divide by N, where N is equal to the number of subintervals that we're creating. So this is a formula that we're going to want to memorize. That when we're looking for the delta x, I'm just going to kind of box it in here in red. Yes, it's the base of our rectangles, but delta x is b minus a divided by n. And these are always equal subintervals. Now, the height of our rectangles, the heights are the y values. And these are determined by either the left, midpoint, or right side of the interval according to what you're asked for. So determined by the left, midpoint, or right of each subinterval. So depending upon what you're asked, your height is going to be a y value, but either from the left, midpoint, or right side of the subinterval. And so then the idea is to approximate the full area underneath the curve, we would add up all of these rectangles. So just to kind of start us off, the area is going to be approximately, we're going to have the first base, which is our delta x, and then times the first y value that we have. So let's just call it y sub 0. Then it's delta x that's the same, plus, oops, sorry, times the next y value. And we're going to do that for however many we have, so delta x is the base for all of them, and then times, let's say, the nth, or our last rectangle. And you might notice that since delta x is the same for all of them, we could actually pull that out as a greatest common factor and have delta x pulled to the front since it's the same base for all of them, and then you would just add up all of your y values for however many rectangles you had in there, up until the last rectangle. So on our example, we only had five rectangles, and that would represent an approximate area underneath your function. All right, so for the next problem here, it's asking us to consider this function for f of x, and we're going to play around with an LRAM, RAM, and MRAM um, to estimate this function using this address to Desmos. So if you want to take a second and type it in, you can follow me there. But I'm going to bring you to my Desmos. And I've pulled it up here. So I've got a couple of tabs over here. I'm going to just minimize the graph customization um, and take a look at this primary input. And we're just going to kind of mess around with this. Oops, sorry. This is the function that we have sketched here. And for the interval A to B to start, I'm 
setting us up from negative three to three. So this is the space underneath the curve. And right now I've got N set equal to four and I have four rectangles in here. Can you guess if it's an LRAM, MRAM or RAM? Yeah, it's an LRAM because we're using the left side. Now, the more rectangles I put in here, you'll notice the better the estimation is because I'm fitting more and more rectangles. I also liked this example because we can see when a function is increasing, LRAM is an underestimate. It's missing some of the area. But on the intervals where the function is decreasing, the LRAM is an overestimate because it's going above the space. And the more rectangles we add in there, the better the approximation is. And when we get more and more and more and more, we almost hardly even see the difference between the, um, the area under the curve and the fact that we have these rectangles in there. Now, this is an LRAM. It's coming from the right side. But if I change this to go to the 0.5 here, now I'm showing you an MRAM. This is set up with seven rectangles, but notice the height of my rectangles is coming from the midpoint. And my MRAM is still estimating the area under the curve. And if we kind of lessen the rectangles, you can see the midpoint a little more dramatically. But if I put more and more and more and more rectangles underneath there, it's getting closer and closer and closer. It'll look like it's just shading in the area underneath that function. And then lastly, if I wanted to take a look at an RAM, an RAM is going to use the right side. So now the rectangle height is coming from the right side of each subinterval. And so the rectangles, when f of x is increasing, are an overestimate, but decreasing, it's an underestimate. And notice as I'm dragging n, the base of the rectangles are getting smaller and smaller because we have to keep equal intervals. So the rectangles are becoming more and more narrow as I increase the number underneath there. Fewer rectangles, the wider the base is and the less amount of rectangles we can fit under there. All right, so let's practice a few. It gives us the graph y equals five minus four sine of x over two shown below. And it tells us the window that we're looking at. So it's zero to three on the x and zero to five on the y. First, it wants us to sketch the rectangles for LRAM, RAM, and MRAM with n equal to three. So n equal to three, that lets us know that we're creating three rectangles. So once we know how many rectangles, we can calculate the base or the delta x. We're on the interval from 0 to 3. So b minus a is 3 minus 0 divided by n. So we're really making rectangles of base 1. So each one is going to be a rectangle. Now on the first one, if we're going to do an LRAM, our interval is from 0 to 1, we're going to use the height on the left side and draw a rectangle with the height at 5 on this one. And then we're going to look at our next subinterval from 1 to 2 and use the height from the left side, so the height from 1, and draw our rectangle. And then our last subinterval, we're going to use the height from 2 and draw our rectangle. Notice this time we have an overestimate. Because our rectangles are actually going above the curve, so we're calculating more area than needed. This time now, the middle one wants an RAM, so don't get thrown off. We didn't put the, um, the MRAM in the middle this time. So our RAM uses the height here from the right side, and then it's going to draw the height back this way so that the height of our rectangle is coming from the right side. So the next one, the height's going to come from the 2 or the height at 2. And then the last one is going to come from the height at 3. And this time we have an underestimate because our rectangles are below the curve and not including some of the area. 
Our last one wants an MRAM. So an MRAM is going to have to come from the midpoint. So our interval is still from 0 to 1. That's where I want to draw the rectangle. But my midpoint then would be at 0.5. And I'm going to follow that up to the function. That's going to be the Y value that I use. But notice I still use the base of 1. The rectangle is still from 0 to 1. Same thing for our next one. The next rectangle is still from 1 to 2 but I'm going to get the height from the middle of the interval. And that's my rectangle. And then the last one, I get the height from the middle, 2.5. And that's going to be the height of my rectangle. So my MRAM, again, in these examples, looks like the best estimate. But remember, that's not always going to be true. All right, so how are we going to calculate these now? Because in this one, it's asking us to calculate the approximations, and then they ask us to put them in order from greatest to smallest. Well, we already know the greatest to smallest because we can see that the RAM is the overestimate, MRAM is the middle, and um, RAM is the underestimate. To actually calculate these values, we need the base and the height. So we actually have up here, we already figured out the base. The base of all of our rectangles are 1. Even for the MRAM, the base is the same for all of these. What we need are the Y values. And we're going to make a table of values in order to do this. So. I'm going to use the calculator to help me with this, but my x values will be able to use the same table of values for the LRAM and RAM together. So I'm just going to put my x values as 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I can make a table of values with that. And then the y values we're going to get from our calculator. So I'm going to take out the calculator, plug in y equals... Okay, and I plugged in there my 5 minus 4 sine x over 2. And then I'm just going to go to the table of values and fill in what I see. So we've got 0 is 5 at 1, 3.0823, at 2, 1.6341, and at 3, 1.01. So now I can use these values. Let's first calculate an LRAM. The base is the same for all of them. It's a 1. Granted, we don't have to write it when it's a 1, but just good to understand that we're multiplying by the base. And now for the LRAM, I'm only going to use the first three Y values, and the last one drops out of the LRAM. The last Y value... drops out of LRAM because remember, look at our, our graph here. We only have one, two, three rectangles, and the last one uses this height 1.6 something. It doesn't use the height of the last one. So now I'm just going to add up. I've got 5 plus 3.0823 plus the 1.6341. Let's plug that into the calculator and I get an LRAM of 9.7164, which I know from looking at it is the greatest value because it's our overestimate. Now, I don't have to make a new table for my RAM because the RAM is going to still use these Y values, except now I'm going to use the three Y values where the first one is going to drop out of my RAM we can visually see that the first y value drops out of RAM because we're using from the right side. So it's first the height at 1 that we're using on our first rectangle. The base is still 1, so I'm writing it just to know that we thought about it. But then the first height we're going to use is 3.0823. Then the 1.6341. And then we're going to use the last y value this time. So 
So I get an RM of 5.7264, which is definitely our underestimate because we can see all of this space here that's not included. All right, even if I just kind of shade in the rectangles, we could see the area that we are including compared to the area that's not being included. And in our LRAM, our area went over the area underneath the curve is what we're trying to approximate. Now, this table of values is not going to help me with my MRAM because the MRAM, I need the midpoint of each of these subintervals. So to calculate our midpoint, we want to take our first interval, which is, or our base, our delta x, and divide it by 2. So if I take my delta x divided by 2, in this case, my midpoint is just 0.5. And then it's going to be every 0.5 from there. So my first midpoint was at 0.5. The next one's going to be at 1.5. And the last one's going to be at 2.5. So all I need to do to get this table of values is go to the graphing calculator and change the table set to start at 0.5 but still have it increase by ones because that's the base. And if you change the table set to start at 0.5, it will then give you the values at every 0.5 or every midpoint along the way. So I've got 4.0104, 2.2104, 3.0104, 4. and again, I'm reading these from the table of values changing the table set to start at 0.5, but still increase by ones. And now none of these drop out. I'm going to use all three of these. Oops. Use all three heights. Nothing drops out of an MRAM table because we actually found all the midpoints. The base, remember, doesn't change. The base is still 1. Even though I'm seeking out the height at the 0.5 mark, the base didn't change. So now I'm going to add up all these values. And I get my MRAM to be 7.48. 7, 9, which I'm glad to see is in the middle of my other two because that looked to be the best approximation. So if I'm putting my order um, or my approximations in order from greatest to least, the greatest value was the LRAM, and then the middle value was the MRAM, and my smallest value was the RAM for this one. Visually drawing the rectangles helps you order and figure out who is the over and under estimates. Let's do one more. The graph of y equals 2 sine of x plus 5 plus 3 is shown below. Again, we're looking from 0 to 3 to 0 to 5 as our domain and range. We this time want to sketch the rectangles for LRAM, RRAM, and MRAM with n equals 3. So if I want three rectangles, I'm going to calculate the delta x. B minus A, so my X interval from A to B would be 3 minus 0. And again, this time we're dividing by 3, so I've got a nice whole number of 1. So an LRAM is going to use the left side to create my rectangles. So to sketch my LRAM, I'm using the Y values on the left. And this is approximating the area under the curve using an LRAM. This time round, is the LRAM an under or an overestimate? Yeah, it's an under. Look at the space that it's not including. Now the next one wants the RRAM. So now I'm going to take my heights from the right side, from the right side, and draw the height back to the left. Height from the right side. And the height from the last right side. 
And these are my rectangles. The RAM this time is going above the curve. So RAM is my overestimate. And then the last one, my MRAM, I'm still going to use this base of 1, but the height is going to come from the midpoint. So my rectangles are going to use the middle of the interval to determine the height, but then I'm still going to draw the rectangle over the whole base of 1. So then coming up the middle here to find the y value and using that to draw my height. And this would be my MRAM to approximate the area underneath the function. So in terms of order, we can already answer that. We can already see that the greatest one this time is going to be the RAM. MRAM is in the middle again. And the smallest one is going to be the LRAM. But we've got to actually calculate these values too. Calculate each approximation and put them in order. So I kind of jumped the gun and put them in order just by the visual, which is fine. But let's calculate these. So we'll go back to our calculator and we need to plug this into our y equals. 2 sine of x plus 5, close parentheses, plus 3. Now, your table of values needs to be adjusted again. you got to go to your table set and tell it to start at 0, and we're still going to increase by 1s. So I'm going to just go to the next slide here so that I can draw my table of values. So my table of values starts at 0 and increases by 1, and the y values that I'm getting are 1.0822, 2.4412, four point three one four and then four point nine seven eight seven now I'm not going to use all of these I'm only having three rectangles remember the base is one that's our delta x and the L ram is going to use the first three rectangles the last one drops out of an L ram so one point zero eight two two plus 2.4412, plus 4.314. Let's plug that in. And I get an LRAM of 7.8374. My RAM, I can use this same table, but now I just want to drop off the very first one. Remember, this one in the front is the base, it's always base times, so the base was our delta x, and that's the 1 for all of these. So dropping off the first y value, I'm going to get these three as my heights. 2.4412, 4.314, Let's plug those into the calculator. And I get 11.7339. I like that I'm seeing that it's an overestimate or bigger than the LRAM. And now lastly, I need my MRAM. But the problem again is I need to fit a new table in here because the midpoint between 0 and 1, I need 0.5 then 1.5, and then 2.5. So I've got to go back to my table of values and adjust it to start at 0.5. I still want it to increase by 1s, but I don't want to start at 0. I want to start at 0.5. So my new table of values are going to use the midpoints. And the last one, 4.876. My MRAM then, remember the base doesn't change, so I'm still going to use the 1. Even though I needed to make a new table, my delta x is still the base of 1. And now the heights came from the middle. So I'm going to add up. None of them drop out because these are the three rectangles. Whatever n is is how many y values you should have. 
Let's add these guys in the calculator. And I've got my MRAM right in the middle where I wanted it, 9.8679. All three of these are approximating the area under the curve where we have an overestimate of 11 point seven something, a pretty good approximation of 9.8, and an underestimate of 7.8.